Welcome to this video presentation about the science of salmon farming. A commentary was recently posted on the Facebook page of Inside Scottish Salmon Feedlots. The page is entitled Salmon Farm Science. Most salmon farming industry critics usually eschew the science at all costs. So this posting offers a real opportunity to explore the science behind the attacks on farm salmon. This specific posting looks at the issue of sea lice and its purpose is to gain the attention of the wider public and deter them from buying and eating farm salmon. The commentary makes a number of claims, the first of which is that a typical 1000 ton salmon farm will produce 3 billion larval lice every month. Mature female sea lice do produce many larvae, however the exact number is subject to mathematical interpretation. In this presentation, I want to focus on the science, so we'll leave the discussion as to how many larvae are produced for another time. I would, however, suggest that the figure of 3 billion larvae quoted could be up to 30 times greater than other estimates. The commentary claims that these 3 billion lice flood out of the farm into a larval soup that can spread out for a distance of 19 miles and that just 12 of these sea lice will kill a young salmon. The implication is that these numerous lice could wipe out whole stocks of salmon in the wild. Before I examine these claims in more detail, I would like to summarize the points that will be discussed in the following slides. Firstly, the idea of a larval soup made up from billions of sea lice larvae is flawed. Not only is this number of larval lice a gross exaggeration, the densities of sea lice larvae in the sea have been found to be extremely low, even in relatively close proximity to salmon farms. Migrating wild salmon smolts will therefore have a very low exposure to infectious sea lice larvae. Furthermore, the suggestion that 12 sea lice will kill a juvenile salmon is not supported in the scientific literature. There are references to a figure of 11 lice causing the death of a 15 gram smolt, but this number has been extrapolated from a laboratory experiment of artificially infected fish conducted nearly 25 years ago. In this presentation, I'd like to first focus on the claim that sea lice are dispersed over an area of 19 miles from a farm. This is a map of Loch Etive near Oban. The loch is 19 miles in length, which is the distance claimed that larval lice can be dispersed whilst remaining infected. The 19 mile dispersal comes from a scientific paper from Marine Scotland Science from 2013. The distance was calculated from sea lice counts on sea trout sampled by various fisheries trusts over a period from 2003 to 2009. High lice counts suggest a higher risk of infection. An estimate of the distance beyond which lice might not be considered lethal was put at 31 kilometres. However, there was a considerable uncertainty about this cut-off distance. The range of this uncertainty ran from 13 to 149 kilometres. The original data from 2003 to 2009 is not available. However, the data from the same sampling sites and the same fisheries trusts from 2011 to 2015 has been published. This graph shows the percentage prevalence from each of these sites that is, the percentage of fish infected with lice in each sample. These are shown roughly in the order of the location of each of the fisheries trusts. This is the same data as the previous slide, but put in order of distance of the sampling site from a farm. It would make sense that the sites nearest a farm might have the highest infestation rate and those furthest away have the least. The sites on the left of the graph are nearest to a farm, with two only being two kilometres away. The furthest sites away from a farm appear on the right. There are five that exceed the 31 km cutoff point. The furthest away is 50 km. What is clear is there's no pattern at all to the infestations and that most sites have both high and low infestations of lice on sampled sea trout. The usual method of measurement of lice infestation is by using sea trout as a proxy as highlighted in the previous slides. However, it's also possible to directly sample the larval lice in the seawater by trawling with a plankton net. In 1999, Costello and others sampled lice from the west coast of Ireland. They found levels of three lice per cubic metre within 10 metres of the farm, but this diminished as the distance away increased. By a distance of one kilometre, the density had fallen to less than 0.2 lice per cubic metre. 
the researchers stated that they were unable to find levels above this anywhere else along the coast. A more recent paper by Nelson and others carried out a similar study in the Bay of Funday in eastern Canada. They found densities of about 1.2 lice per cubic metre near the farm, but this dropped to about 0.4 of a lice per cubic metre at a distance of just 100 metres away. Using the data they collected, Nelson argues that a typical farm of 18 pens would have a stock of 450,000 fish and cover an area of just under 2 million cubic metres. Nelson goes on to suggest that if each fish carried two mature females producing 350 eggs each, then the theoretical density at the point of release would be 160 larvae per cubic metre. Yet over a five year period and 1800 samples, the highest density found outside the farm was two larvae per cubic metre. The idea there is a soup of infectious sea lice is simply wishful thinking by those who wish to blame salmon farms for declining wild salmon stocks. I would like to return to Loch Etiv to look at the theoretical dispersal of sea lice from a salmon farm. A rough estimate of sea lice production from a 1,000 ton salmon farm would be about 92 million larval lice. If these lice were dispersed over an area the size of the 19 mile long Loch Etive to a depth of just one metre, then the density of lice would be just over two larvae per cubic metre. In the open seas, that density would be much lower. I would also like to address the claim that research has shown that 12 sea lice are enough to kill a juvenile salmon. However, it's unclear what research this actually is. Thorstad and Finstad, who wrote a review paper for salmon and trout conservation, quote a figure of 11 lice. What is interesting is that they do not provide any scientific reference for this level of mortality. Thorstad and Finstad cite a range of papers without being specific as to the relevance of the content. A search through these papers identified that the figure of 11 has not been derived from scientific experimentation. A study by Grimness and Jacobson in 1996 determined from a laboratory experiment that 30 pre-adult lice will kill a 40 gram fish. This is the equivalent of 0.75 lice per gram of fish. In 2000, Finstad and others caught smolts from the wild of a weight of 15 grams and calculated using the figure of 0.75 lice per gram, that 11.3 lice would kill these smaller fish. Whilst there's no indication that such mortality occurs in the wild, the researchers did not actually state that 11 or 11.3 lice would kill a smolt. Instead, the paper states that the lice may have a detrimental effect on the wild smolts of 15 grams. This is not the same as saying 11 attached or mobile lice can cause death of an Atlantic salmon post smolt of 15 grams, as Thorstadt and Finstad state in their review paper. So to summarise, a 1,000 tonne farm is extremely unlikely to produce 3 billion larval lice. The lice that are produced on salmon farms are quickly dispersed away from the farm in such low densities that can hardly be described as a larval soup. The number of lice calculated to kill a wild smolt has been determined from one laboratory experiment conducted 24 years ago. There's plenty of other data that would indicate that the threat to wild salmon from salmon farms is minimal, but these have been largely ignored by those who blame salmon farms for declining wild stocks. Finally, in the wild, sea lice have a life strategy and behaviour that is very different to that which opponents of the salmon farming industry propose for sea lice produced on salmon farms. Ultimately, sea lice have to find a host to survive and being passively dispersed in the open sea would seem an extremely ineffective way of locating a migrating salmon. By comparison, most parasites have a complex life strategy to maximise host location. Sea lice are unlikely to be any different. Thank you very much for watching.